So I get asked all the time what my most recommended livestock animal is when it comes to sustainability and what you should have on the homestead. I will say, if you want peace and quiet, don't get turkeys. Um, honestly, I probably could have had an answer for that question a couple years ago, but now my answer is this. You need to look at your property and you need to evaluate the land that you are working with and you need to pick animals and breeds of animals that are going to work on your property. We are taking over an old beef farm. So we have grazing animals. We have sheep. We have Idaho pasture pigs. We used to raise great big large commercial stuff commercial style pigs and um, obviously that's not going to work for us anymore. We want to preserve our pasture and grow some more pasture. Good lord, boys. <sighs> um, so look at your property, look at what you're working with and research species that are going to work for you and re research the breeds of those species that are going to work for you. Uh, reach out to me with your specifics and we'll talk different breeds and different types of livestock, but it's really so dependent on who you are, what you're looking for out of your property and what type of property you're working on. There's no good answer to that question. <laughs> Just my kid eating a whole container of feta cheese. Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on, G. <laughs> there you go. His tail wagon. <laughs> I swear, since we have started moving stuff to the new property, this happens every day. What are you doing? Every single day, um, since we've been moving stuff to the new property, a chicken or two chickens get in my car, get in the truck, get in the trailer. Apparently, they are afraid that they're going to be left behind. Hey, guys. So, um, I'm very impatiently waiting for the herb bed to start sprouting but it has been pretty chilly out and we still have a couple of cold nights ahead of us so it might be a while um i might end up putting a few starts in there uh, from a local nursery and then just rolling with it when the seeds come up if the seeds come up the cold might have ruined them but um anyways we had our first uh death on the farm for a while. It's been a couple of years since we've lost anything on the farm, actually. So that little baby goat that we um, had to nurse back to health, you guys saw in a previous video, he was born really small and um, he was too cold to eat, uh, uh, to eat off of his mother. Um, so he's been doing great. Uh, up until yesterday, he went missing. Um, he was there when I left the house to come work on the new house. And then he was not there when I got back. And it was only about three hour span. Um, and it was time to lock everybody up for the night. So uh, we looked for him and looked for him. Couldn't find him. 
walked 10, you know, did it like a 10, 20 yard sweep past the fence line into the woods, couldn't find him, checked the roadside. Um, <clears throat> typically he doesn't go very far from his mother or the barn because he's so small and, um, couldn't find him. And we kind of summed it up to more than likely a bird of prey had snatched him up, um, and carried him off because he was, he was literally maybe five pounds, six pounds. Um, his brother's much bigger. So, um, we kind of took that as a loss, kind of hoping he would just show up in the morning. Maybe we didn't see him, but we were pretty sure that we checked everywhere. Um, and then we found this morning, um, when I went out to feed everybody, we found him uh, laying on the trail that connects the pasture and the driveway um, where True kind of comes in and out. Uh, she goes out at night to patrol. She comes back in in the morning to sleep. We found him there. Um, he was dead. Uh, <clears throat> he was in... The type of position with very like no bite marks no blood um that either something small like a weasel grabbed him and just drained him and left him. or like i said he was uh he was snatched up by a bird of prey we have a lot of bald eagles around here a lot of big hawks um and they they couldn't hang on to him he was probably wiggling around quite a bit and they probably dropped him um from a good distance uh, one that a five pound baby goat would not survive. So, um, it's, I would assume that True found him while she was out. She walks, um, she walks a good 30 yards off the fence line into the woods at night. Uh, and she just walks back and forth, um, and making sure everything's, you know, where it's supposed to be. And she barks to let predators know that she's there. I would assume True found him and brought him back. Um, and that's why he was back on the property this morning. Uh, it sucks. He was going to be food for us. Um, he was not a breeder or anything of that sort. But it is, um, it is sucky when it happens to a baby, of course. And that's just kind of the fine line um, of balance that we ride when we start farming. Um, we are constantly in key and in competition with mother nature and you know we do what we can um biologically for these animals um you know someone said why wasn't he in the barn at that age i said he's two weeks old a two week old uh, goat kid does not belong locked up in the barn they belong out on you know in in the pasture with the adults uh, foraging and uh, building healthy muscle and healthy immunity and um, so we did what we could biologically for him. And sometimes Mother Nature wins. Sometimes they win the fight. And uh, that's just the line of balance that we ride and have to deal with when we're farming and homesteading. Good morning, Dinah. Good morning. Good morning. So Paul is down back. Um, uh, harrowing, that's the word, harrowing the garden, um, which is what you do after you plow it and you make it all smooth and ready for planting. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Oh, I'm going to sit down for a second and drink my uh, second cup of coffee. We are officially moved in, by the way. Um, still organizing everything. We've barely moved any of our stuff over in comparison to how much stuff we have. But, uh, you know, fortunately, we can take our time on that. But we're trying to get animals situated so that everything runs smoothly here. We have two weeks before we go on a trip to Michigan, and we will have a farm setter, but we want everything to run smoothly for them. So, 
um, yeah, so I'm going to sit here and have a cup of coffee and I wanted to thank you guys for joining us, um, for this video and joining us for ge in general. Um, and, uh, I hope that the sun is shining where you are. We went a couple days without it. I think we have some more rain coming, but I think after Thursday, it's going to be sun for like seven days. Um, and that will be get the garden in, get outside work done. Um, and then the rain, I'm sure, will come back for at least three days. That's kind of how it works here in the springtime. I to thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share with your friends and family that would enjoy our journey as well. Uh, by the way, that is the color that we're going to do on the outside. We have to finish that. Again, we are waiting for a long stretch of sun. So hopefully next week the painting on the outside of the house will get finished. But um, good morning, True. Good morning. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Happy homesteading.